Is a Terra Blade the only other good pick? I'm trying to remember. Like based on you know uh, Hector's hero pool here, what might be the better pick? Uh, anything that picks up a Silver Edge, honestly. Uh, I don't think that Terra Blade is going to be the pick here. You could run it. It does okay against the Spectre, but uh, I think they're gonna. Hmm. They might even run a Death Prophet. I think if you're playing against the Spectre, you're gonna want to take down towers very fast. And Death Prophet is it's kind of like a poor man's Leshrac, but. It could be the play here. They picked Doom. And I've seen a lot of this one when I was casting Perfect World in China the last couple of weeks here. But very rarely do I see it as valued in North South America. I've seen some teams pick it up and honestly just run it in the mid lane, right? Is not that, is that where you saw it in China? Uh, I see it run in the mid lane in the off lane. It's actually yeah. first, first ban almost all the time. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, this hero feels very safe, right? You just get a Midas and eat creeps and then suddenly you have like 8,000 net worth more than the enemy offlaner, and it's very nice. Mm. Mm, see, uh, you know what else is very nice, Neff? What is very nice? Monster <laughs> Energy, the sponsor of our tournament, keeping us energized. I got to get myself some. I got myself Pacific Punch. What you got? Oh, me? I'm uh, going with Default. A big fan of Monster Default. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You can't beat the OG sometimes. Sometimes the uh, the original is all is best. Mm -hmm. You get it right the first time. Is what I like Five to say. Yeah. So they picked the IO here, which is a little interesting. So this looks like a four position IO, right? Because you want to pair that with the Mars, I think. I mean, you could run the Witch Doctor in the off lane and keep IO in the safe with Spectre, which gives her even more regen, which is pretty nice. So you have a lot of a lot of options with that. There's the Lifestealer pick, as we expected. One of the only heroes that's still good against the Spectre and does pretty well against Mars as well. Yeah, that's one of the only melee heroes that uh, goes well against Mars. There's something we were talking about in the other game. Mars and Slaughter, you don't really want to run that many melee heroes into it. So Lifestealer and Drow Ranger are uh, the only heroes that play against Mars and Slaughter. Slaughter, actually, he's still in the pool. That one's interesting. You could pick that one up here, couldn't you? Uh, to to lane against the Spectre? Yeah. You could unless you plan on running the Doom there, right? Which Doom isn't even that bad. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, Doom will struggle against like a Witch Doctor, but if they put the IO there, then I don't think their plan is to really Dyer's pressure the Doom. I think either way, Beast Coast has a pretty flexible draft so far. Yeah, I mean, you can still run the Lena mid if you want. I mean, that's a total option for Chris Luck. God, they've got rid of Dragon Knight. When's the last time you've seen Dragon Knight played? Um, I've seen it a few times. Honestly, like it's it's not that uncommon. I think Quincy Crew ran it a handful of times, like a last pick uh, Dragon Knight in the mid lane, which ended up being pretty nice. Mm, I think it, it plays a little bit slow for this patch, in my opinion. Ever since they changed it over to seven point two seven, they changed the uh, calculation for golden man. XP that you got for kills. You got punished for sitting in the well. You were rewarded for sitting in the lane and not doing anything before, which was awful and very boring. And I'm glad, even though we've been stuck on this patch for five and a half months now, months or years, I can't tell the difference at this point. It's been five and a half decades. Yeah, it's been a while. It, on this patch, uh, at least it's not a very boring patch. You get a lot of gold for killing people, and that part's fun. Yeah, but there's a new one coming probably in the middle of this tournament. So look forward to that one, everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm sure you and I are just going to be super confused all the time trying to figure out exactly what's happening because everyone else is going to have all this time to analyze, you know, these updates, and we're going to be casting. And we'll have to rely on Twitch chat's 10k MMR gigabrains to tell us exactly what all the changes mean. Ooh, I had to keep my eye on Twitch chat this game so they can explain to me uh, what exactly is going on here. <laughs> I actually did see Trent in the chat earlier. I've been uh, stealing some things that he says, to be honest with you. I've been watching some of uh, his him casting games going over replays pretty early in the morning. It's been giving me some decent insights to... Well, he answered my questions about Death Prophet and whatnot. Smart guy. Nice. Very nice. Five seconds. Yeah. Beast Coast, uh, see how they round this draft off. I think something else that can hit towers here, they don't want to let them stall out this game on Arkosh. I mean, it kind of makes sense uh, why they didn't pick up this Slardar earlier before this last phase here. They want to be able to play this draft a little bit faster, and they know that none of your harass in the lane is really going to stick on the Spectre because of the Rings of Regen, because of the Voodoo Restoration, and they end it with an Undying here. So it's going to be Lena in the mid. Yep, so it is going to be the Chris Luck mid Lena. 
This gives Arkosh the ability to kind of try and counter pink this as best as possible. This now makes a lot more sense when we look at the, the Kunkka and the Dragon Knight ban, right? Um, do they have a lot of options here is the question. Lestrax banned. Well, we'll see. They just picked the Void Spirit. Okay. And it's the classic. I mean, uh, talked to Quinn about this a little while ago, saying that uh, the heroes just... You feel invincible when you're on a Spirit hero. I guess Canis the Furry Vulpus. He's going to uh, go mid lane. Pale Horse God. will be playing the Spectre. Gremlo is going to be on Mars. This guy. <laughs> oh, my God. Two games of this. All right. It's yep, yep, yep. It's just getting started now. We got a whole tournament of this. Hope they make it interesting for them. But uh, against the Giants on Beast Coast, I'm not sure these, uh, these furry role players are going to be able to do anything. I'm going to be honest with you. We'll see. Yeah, they got a, like I said, you pointed out early, Arkosh Gaming really have their work cut out for them. Beast Coast, an incredibly strong team. They have some pretty good comfort picks as well. Like Chris Lux Lena um, is really, really, really strong. We'll see how he does in the mid lane versus the Void Spirit, which on paper to me, it feels like Chris Luck is pretty happy with that lane overall. I don't think he's really going to struggle. No, uh, he's uh, going to be just fine in the mid lane here. Definitely has a favorable matchup. I mean, I don't think he'll max out uh, Electric Ray and Fiery Soul. I definitely think he'll go the Dragon Slave build here. Uh, it's not as easy to get those clicks off onto Void Spirit, even though he's got the range attacks. Um, just because you have that 250 distance, uh, you're not really a melee hero, even though you're a melee hero. Managed to get Io through the pool, though. It's sort of been one of the more popular heroes right now. Yeah. It's, you know, very nicely with the Marius when you just buy the headdress you tether up so i think they've just kind of conceded to the fact that well okay okay hold on this mars bot boots a speed first item what uh, the heck? that's Hello. spicy i've never oh, seen that oh and gremlo at the start of this one okay yeah we're gonna see how well these boots of speed pay off i mean he is really fast with tethered 370 movement speed but so is Gremlo the four? No, Gr wait. Maybe he is here. Maybe Io is going to go ahead and play the core in the off lane. I mean, Gremlo is normally the three, but I'm wondering, you might be right. They may be swapping this and playing a core Io here in the off lane uh, with a support Mars. I mean, he's got a bottle and stuff queued, but I don't really know. We'll have to see. Why the hell would you start boots of speed first? You're not going to be able to harass uh, K1. You're not going to be able to contest for CS. You're only sending at 56 damage. How the hell are you going to get last hits like this? You're against an undying as well. You're just going to sap even more of that damage away from you. I feel like it has to be a support at this point. There's no way this works, right? Goddamn Raptilians in my Dota game. Dude, they are crazy. They do the weirdest stuff. Uh, Whisper. Uh, I'm assuming he's just going to devour the creep wave creep wave but the range creep as soon as that creep wave spawns bottom lane crow playing really aggressively is gonna go ahead and get that bounty rune a maledict onto stinger the boots does it actually pay off is the maledict's gonna start ticking as a decay in two which gives him a lot of health he tries to dodge the two-man decay and he does stinger one more maledict tick but it's not gonna be enough makes it under the tower He's going to be just fine, though. Probably could deny himself to creep or something like that. Sitting on plus 20 strength, so he'll lose the... He'll just walk uh, base, right? Yeah, he'll lose the last of the HP he has slowly as he walks with the base. No way he's sticking around for this one. So his own boots are what gets him out of that one. Ooh, top lane. We're going to start seeing... Uh... Honestly, I think if you're Pale Horse here, you kind of just free farm this lane, but I don't see Whisper really dying until you have like level three on the Witch Doctor and Spectre, right? You need those extra points in Maledict, and even then, if you have like Scorched Earth and Boots, I don't know how you actually get the kill. Yep. All right, Goat gets the Maledict off on the Schofield as he tries to cut the creep wave here. He's going to play with it a little bit regardless. Rolling Boulder limits what he's able to do, and he at least manages to stop Schofield from pulling that range creep. XP is going to be lost there. Uh, this Witch Doctor, <laughs> this Witch Doctor Spectre lane is going to be pretty annoying. I mean, you actually can, you have decent rundown potential between these two. You can blow people up. I mean, Malik doesn't do as much against Doom once you have a couple points of that Devour and your health regen increases. You've got decent kill threat there still. 
lane. Kane is almost taking a lot of damage, but able to get his bottle, managed to secure all the range or all of the creeps under the tower. He might even get the range. He does a nice remnant as well. Uh, this might backfire, sir. Chris Luck, if he hits that LSA, he does not. He's going to be fine. They both have uh, fairy fires, right? So playing really aggressive there could potentially get you a kill or, or yeah, kill you in the process, rather. Chris Luck hesitated there for a moment. He's also in pretty awkward positioning. Canis. I had no mana though, so we had no real kill threat onto Chris Luck. Chris Luck loses a lot of HP there because of that one though. Does he have a bottle coming out? He does. He so he ferried regen instead, whereas Canis Volpus rushed the bottle. A little bit of different play style, I suppose, but I mean overall, I mean this Void Spirit's doing great in the mid lane. He has 14 CS. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he has the advantage in the way that uh, he's got higher base damage. Lena is able to play with the aggro, or well, higher base damage just because of the Quelling Blade anyways. Mm -hmm. And Chris Luck messed up earlier, so didn't get that much punish off. Actually taking a lot of harass here from these auto attacks, but he has the bottle and the fairy fire, so Chris Luck can't kill him. Needs to get this bottle online for himself as soon as possible here. Yeah, I mean, these four-minute power runes are going to be huge, and if I look at the rotations from these supports, I really do favor Beast Coast, right? You have an Earth Spirit and an Undying who can contest, you know, these side runes because I don't think Life Shield is really under too much threat here in the bottom lane. And if uh, Chris Luck's able to get that power rune timed with his really nice bottle, the lane should tip in his favor. Yep. It, uh, definitely going to agree with that one. Probably have somebody rotate and refill his bottle for him pretty quickly after it arrives in the first place. All right, I'll give it up. That was pretty good there when Kay just what ends you do? up. You throw throughout the Aether Remnant at the same time in between auto attacks for going for the ward, so Chris Luck wasn't able to deny it. Ooh, that's spicy. That's a, that's a high IQ play there for sure. So surprisingly, these boots bottom lane are kind of paying off. Like, Mars is really fast. He just kind of runs away from the life stealer. He did go for the Calling Blade, so he is, in fact, the core. It's not the IO. I will not enable Gremlo or his boots for his Mars build. It's bad. I, well, it's not bad. It's it's different. We'll say it's different. It doesn't feel very powerful. I'll give it that. Mm -hmm. It is the four-minute timing. Schofield already at top rune. It's just going to be a 50-50 draw. Canis Vulpus knows he he just has to get lucky. And it's going to be an invis for Chris Luck with a brand new bottle. Mm -hmm. That's about as so. good as it gets. I mean, obviously, he'd much rather have like a DD or a haste, but... I mean, this is very, very, very big for the Lina because now someone has to TP mid to refill the Void Spirit or he just waits to the five minute bounties. Top lane, Goat, very low. This might be the first blood. Pops the Fairy Fire. He's going to survive Whisper. Falling low, does have Maledict on him. Pale Horse throws another dagger. This is going to be it. Pops with a Maledict. Goat, we are not sure about the Witch Doctor, but he gets the first blood. He does manage to get the first blood there. Doom, he should have had a raindrop or a wand or something to be able to heal off some of this Malik damage. We talked about the kill potential. He's get level three. Oh, he goes Voodoo Restoration. There it is, baby. The sustain for the lane. Uh, yep. Uh, this is the uh, low skill build that everyone's complaining <laughs> about. Nice job, Goat and Pale Horse. You guys sure are doing it. Look at Crow's body blocks bottom. He's going to be able to get that. Uh... Oh, no. Stinger snakes it right under his, uh, right under his nose. There's going to be three bounty runes then going the way of Beast Coast. Schofield top lane, very low. And now with the Witch Doctor, I mean, he's got a Mango, so you do have kill potential with, you know, Maledict and uh, Cask. He's, he's got a little bit of uh, item to work with. He, this, this is what he, what he gets for going boots first, though. Bottom lane, many... they just catch... Uh, he's oh. got Rage. He's pretty low. We'll chew through the trees. Ooh, baby. They pop the overcharge. They're going to just turn onto that tombstone. Couple auto attacks. Gets that bonus gold right away. I mean, this bottom lane's going great. I think a lot of it, just this God's Rebuke spam because of all this bonus mana regen. Uh, I, I mean, this is... <laughs> they have the Top exact... Lane, the Laguna. LSA comes out. It's going to catch the Witch Doctor. A good cast, but they finish him off. Two heroes dead in the top lane. Great rotation from Chris Luck there. Yeah, getting exactly what they deserve right now on Arkosh. The furry rotating top. 
He's actually going to be able to dodge this uh, rune, so or the rune, the ward, so they don't actually know that he's here. Schofield's going to run right into him. A quick initiation from that astral step. The question is, can he get more? Whisper, he crashes this remnant. It's going to be an easy setup here for the GOAT, and they've got him, baby. A great rotation from Canis Vulpus this time. All right, double kill for the furry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him the furry pretty, pretty regularly, by the way. That's that's fair. I don't want you to humanize him in any way. Don't give him a real name. <laughs> we'll go back and forth. You know, we gotta change it up, make it interesting. Mid lane, obviously, Void Spirit is now back. The Arcane Rune, Ooh, doing some good harassment damage as well. I mean, overall, Chris Luck's having a fantastic time. Canis Volpus is playing super aggressive. The Astral Step, the Dissimulate, Chris Luck, he's able to dodge the LSA as a result. There is going to be the uh, Haunt, and a Remnant comes through. Chris Luck is dead in the mid lane, and he takes the Haunt back to top. Pale Horse back to the safe lane, just happy to farm. Except he gets kicked right into Whisper, where he's just going to take an Infernal Blade to the face. And a lot of the Scorch Earth damage as yeah. well here. These guys have the exact same strategy going on for top and bottom lane, though. Uh, just tons sustain, of eight, right? Just sustain, sit inside these lanes. These guys are playing 7.26. <laughs> Very I, true. They're getting a couple kills now. I'll give them that. Another, Still not the way they're playing, though. Another rotation from Canis Volpus. This time, he is going to be under a ward. They will scout him. An immediate TP coming in from Chris Luck. He's got to be careful to silence the Doom. What a sick setup here right away. A boulder will connect. He's trying to finish off that Void Spear, but in comes the Io, the Overpower, the Slow. Chris Luck commits the Laguna Blade and finds the kill. LSA going to catch the Witch Doctor as well as Whisper. Running down Pale Horse here. Schofield will find him in the trees. Infernal Blade is there in a four-man gank from Beast Coast. Can actually set up a beautiful three kills and potentially a tier one tower. Chris Luck cares so little about that. He turns around to last hit some creeps as he goes for that kill there. Yeah. This guy min maxing his farm. Absolutely beautiful. How can Arkosh Gaming possibly stand a chance against a team of this caliber? That was a little bit of a false sense of security there, right? Because they got the gank last time on the Void Spear, so I think they assumed there was no ward. Speaking of the Void Spear, goes in, jumping onto the Doom, a Spear of Mars to finish it off the backside. Ghost just gets slapped by Chris Luck. <laughs> They're crumbling right now on Arkosh. The, just can't keep up with the pacing of Beast Coast. And Chris Luck, he's not slowing down at all. He turns his eyes towards Pale Horse here in the mid lane. Actually, he passes him. He's... Let me have the bottle into his uh, inventory now instead of his clarity. I think he'll Doom will probably teleport in the mid and he'll drop it on the Doom. Let's see it. Show us that teamwork. No, he goes uh, top. Boo. Boo. Boring. Gremlo does have arena level six. Obviously, he wants level seven for that fourth point in the spear. Um, Doom, however, has Cloak Aura. Does, That's pretty good. Does this guy have... Boots of travel as his hot buy instead of a town portal scroll on Gremlo. Yeah, I was noticing that. That was interesting. This guy, he's, uh, he's all gas and brakes. Mid lane boulder does connect. He finds the IO. Magnetize is there. Stinger hits him with that soul rip, but uh, tethers to safety. They still got relocated. I don't know where he's going from, though. So we'll see in a moment. Oh, wait a minute. What? Oh, is that the magnetize timer? Is that a thing now? Does it show the timer for magnetize? Yeah. Okay, well, I was confused. Top lane, the Arena plus Maledict Doom. You ain't going anywhere, son. Nice pick off there from Goat and Gremlo. Mid lane, they're diving for more. Canis Volpus looking for Stinger. Crow offering that tether assistance. There's going to be a nice usage of that Astral Step and Arcane Rune. Crow falling very low. Pops the overcharge. Silenced up. Schofield unable to find him. Dodges the uh, <laughs> a couple auto attacks there. We'll finish him off, but Canis Volpus should survive as he is quite a mobile hero here. He's going to end up turning around, finding Schofield to cast to offer some assistance. A few auto attacks. Goat actually catches him with the Maledict, and that should be all that's necessary. But Canis Volpus wants to be the one that finds the kill, but not going to happen. He's got to be careful here. Luna. Lena, Luna. She's not in this game. Lena, very scary. They're going to find an Infernal Blade and a quick kill onto Goat. A little bit of sloppy play here from Arkosh Gaming. I'm not surprised. He just, uh... well, let's say he catches him. Crows here, giving him that overcharge. They're going to turn back around, but I don't know if they have the damage for this. They need to run. There's going to be the Laguna. Crow pops that wand, but he's dead again. Chris Luck finds the kill. This guy, he's so good. Mm, all Keenan's 
Martinez Volpes can do there is walk away from him. He spent that entire play on the back foot. I mean, this is what you get for playing on a goddamn track pad. Guy just has no respect for the competitive game. Yeah. I mean, net worth wise, we're seeing the difference here between Beast Coast and Arkosh. It's starting to pull away here. They, uh, the Life Stealer having a fantastic time, as expected. One of the heroes that does do pretty decent against the Mars. He did struggle for a little bit early on, but the rotations from Lena forcing, you know, this IO to other lanes, Mars having to go top. Uh, you now just have a free farming Life Stealer who has an armlet. He's level nine, almost level ten. Yeah, uh, doing very well for himself. Is the Sanj queued up next? He's probably going to go Sanj and Yasha into a Satanic as the game goes on. Uh, going for strategy since build here. I imagine he's going to do. Might just go with, like straight movement speed than uh, Abyssal Blade to try to close this out pretty fast. You don't want to take this too late. River. Chris Lux Finn found a haunt. Oh my gosh, the burst damage there from Canis Volpus plus the Blade Mail just evaporated him. A huge magnetized uh, bouncing around between four heroes. He's going to try and keep it going. The Death Ward comes down immediately canceled. Nice boulder there, but there's going to be the Arena Stinger stuck here all by his lonesome pinned against the wall. They eventually get the IO. Stinger, nice. Sorus keeping himself healthy. They're not going to be able to get the Tombstone either, so it is just time to back out if you're uh, Arkosh Gaming. Like, the Spectre fell a little bit too low. Uh, the kill on Chris Luck there is uh, very big, though, ending his six kill streak. So, swings it down with it. What? All right. Apparently, Lena was, did not count as part of that team fight. Oh, she did for uh, me. Yeah, she got, they, it was about 900 gold for the uh, for Arkosh Gaming. A lot of experience, though, almost 2,000 experience. Ah. But yeah, the blade mail was most uh, was was most of Pale Horse's damage in that fight. The Spectre just popped blade mail as soon as he haunted in, and she, he just reflects both Dragon's LSA and Dragon Slave. Like Lena's attack. health just vanished. Canis, hmm. okay, he's moving top now. He can get on top of Chris Luck and just blow him up. Lena needs to be careful. You need allies beside you. Earth Spirit needs to be able to get him. He's so far away. Yeah, it's time to run. He's got an Astral Step. He's not... Ooh, Dissimilate first. Astral Step second. He's safe. Goat. Maybe not so lucky. They're going to continue chasing. He's got those phase boots. He's active. They are not done. The Doom comes out. Stinger is in. The Boulder does connect. Crow trying to keep him alive. Pops the mech. Is it going to be enough? It seems so unlikely as the Laguna Blade just destroys the IO and the double kill for Stinger on the Undying. A 3 for O. Oh, Beast Coast does not stop. Maybe if this guy wasn't using a track pad, he'd be able to avoid some of these dooms, you know, but he just keeps finding him onto the Void Spirit and he's completely useless because of it. This is this guy, he needs to be able to move around these team fights. He's a mobility hero. Doom gets these off. The river. He still has the DD rune, drops the arena and runs away as uh, he sees both Doom and Schofield running on end. They are giving space for Pale Horse, but I mean, compared to Lena, Doom and Lifestealer, do you even care? Uh, he's like 1800 I, uh, gold behind the other carries good old blade mail active on ancients very nice i mean he'll catch up now that he's got the blade mail i mean the, the fact that especially you can clear ancients with just blade mail feels ridiculous barely losing any hp as well didn't need witch doctor to come and give him a hand though he can move over oh here. my god he got iron talon of course he did he got it pretty late though yeah yeah very nice item yeah, that's why I told the ads before this game started. You know, keep an eye on what Arkosh Gaming is doing. It's uh, not good, not such a good track record. I'm not sure what happened. The show match before this, I was actually out buying some uh, Canadian attire, got myself a jean jacket, so I could be fancy for the broadcast. But uh, very I think nice. Yeah. So very interesting. Gremlo just took two towers uncontested. Uh, he took mid uh, when they were ganking top lane, and then he just walks bottom and kills bottom tower. Mm, I mean, I that's. See. I feel like you, you don't really want to give those towers up for nothing, but he, he just, did just kind of walk bottom and took it, huh? Yeah, he just watched bottom and was like, "All right, I tower." Setting up for a kill on Schofield as well. This is, will be pretty easy. I mean, you can't just roll there. Up. Wait, you can roll through the wall. I learned something today. Thank you. Very nice. I guess you, you know, are not Earth Spirit when you're in the Boulder, right? Uh, you are. You're still Earth Spirit. Is it like ball lightning mechanics though, where like... Oh. No. Oh, he's able to get out on the uh, Mars. Crow tethers away for a moment, but... 
perfect targeting there from Schofield. Hits that boulder, they get that kill. It's Very the, nicely done. It's, it's the humiliation. I think uh, your axis changes a little bit as you're rolling through, or you have the rolling boulder active. And if, uh, it's forced movement and whatnot, so you go right through it rather than your character just being pushed. It works a little bit differently than forced staff and whatnot. Yeah. You can actually bolt smash people through it as well. Ooh, top lane. They're looking for Whisper. He's smart, though. This guy. Look at him. 200 IQ. Backs off from the wave, knowing that there are several heroes missing. If they go for a dive here, it's going to get super punished. Right? You have this TP uh, point here right on this tower. I don't think you have the burst damage for the Doom either, so they will just uh, go back to farming. He's in danger. And uh, these guys, they continue to get to play this on their terms. I think uh, Doom, he's going for it BKB. He's just always able to sit so far in front of the rest of his team. Not that concerned about needing armor right now because it's mostly magical damage they're going to be doing to him. If he sits beside his teammates, Spectre's not going to be able to get him with the Desolate, even after he gets this Manta style. The horse is still struggling to catch up on farm, though, even with his Blade Mail being able to clear out these Ancients. So Canis Vulpus went really aggressive mid lane onto the Undying, who just has... A casual cloak going for his uh, Glimmer Cape here. Almost has it completed, but... Um, Canis Volvos is rushing an Orchid, which is very strong. It's a, it is a really good offensive item, especially against heroes like Life Sither who don't want to build like a Manta or a BKB, right? So... Let's see, mid lane tier one. You got to defend this. This is a big objective here uh, for the side of Beast Ghost if they can take a Gremlo. Walking in, trying to tank this up. Does have the arena, but tower it's just getting melted chris luck gets it denied at least by the mars but they're gonna keep chasing there's nothing in these reptilians are able to do against the lamp of beast coast right now getting absolutely demolished here i mean you got your orchid but what are you gonna do with it life stealer he's gonna have yeah he's got uh what is it basher completed he's got the sanj you know you're gonna be able to stop him from rolling things like a a titan sliver sure because you know they're not really playing this exactly fair as we saw in the show match before but i think you'll build a black king bar or something like that afterwards you're not gonna get much use out of this orchid lena as well already has a yules and a bkb oh arkosh really split here they're gonna get the doom onto the mars a fantastic opener goat drops the death ward but whisper just pops bkb they're gonna just melt the mars and the witch doctor they managed to at least take down the earth spirit up on the high ground but a a really bad start to a fight here for Arkosh, and they just need to disengage and great tether from Crow there. That was very nice. Yeah. Uh, just waiting around there on Pale Horse, so he's able to get him. Chris allied. Lux hunting. They have vision behind the tower. I actually don't think they did. He's got that Invis rune. He still has Yules and his BKB, but they're going to go ahead and look for Whisper here. They do have Stinger to Soul Rip him back up, but so much damage. The Soul Burn from Canis Volpus will finish him off, and Crow gonna get popped by the lena the bkb is out they're gonna go and duke it out but stinger's just getting melted and now chris luck has to disengage as well goat trying to close the gap here there's gonna be the cast but now bkb expiring chris luck he's gotta run there's gonna be the science does catch the earth spirit can they chase any further they decide not to as hector has shown up and he's gonna start banging on this pale horse a nice arena pushing that earth spirit to the side he will get infested getting him a lot of extra hp the magnetize is there Schofield does go down to that uh, Maledict. Oh, Goat gonna throw a great cast. Doesn't end up bouncing over to Life Stealer, but he is silenced up for the time being. They're kiting this out as best as possible. You might get caught here. Chains Bubbles end up getting away, but Lena gets popped. A beautiful Blink Spear comes out from Gremlo, and now Stinger falling low. Arkosh Gaming are just holding their own, and now Hector in some serious trouble as well. Whisper rotating back in, does have his BKB, but they're going to continue chasing. There's going to be the cast. It stuns him up, Hector. He doesn't have rage for one more second. He's going to be able to get away. He doesn't. It's another kill going to Arkosh. What a disaster for Beast Coast, and they chase for more. Whisper, his BKB expired. A blink forward, a spear. It's all of them dying. Oh my gosh. The furry lives on 40 HP. I hate them. I just can't bring them down. They've got too much sustain. You need numbers, Beast Coast. You need numbers. This is a save your fen syndrome if I have ever seen it. Ooh, they managed to catch the Void Spirits. Silenced up. Beautiful snag there. Great play by the supports. What an insane fight. It ends up being what I'm... Mean, that fight recap is a little bit old because I'm pretty sure heroes respawned and then came back and died anyway. 
They, they got back their lead there on Arkosh. They got back their lead. They couldn't quite get their hands on any of these heroes. Lena getting baited around that team fight in and out. Not quite able to land any of these light strike arrays. Really badly needs uh, an Aether Lens or something like that. Just doesn't quite have the distance on these light strike arrays to be able to land them. And you now you have the BKB. Great. You can take these 5v5 engagements. You can punish Arkosh if they jump on you in the back line. But you're not very good at playing aggressive. And if your teammates go down, you struggle to do any damage by yourself. Yeah, I mean, we, we see really early BKB timings coming out here from Beast Coast, right? Like, Lena's down to a 9-second BKB, but had it pretty early. Whisper's already used it twice. Like, he's down to 8 seconds. And Arkosh's team fight is a very delay fight, right? They they can Their whole idea is sustain, like you've pointed out. So these BKBs, once they expire, Beast Coast is in a lot of trouble. So they need to make sure that they get on top of a big hero and blow him up before, you know, the, those BKBs really expire. All right, Hector pushing the bottom tier two tower with the help of his team. They do have Haunt, which will give them a lot of vision, and it looks like they're opting to fight. They're smoked up on the high ground. Gremlo blinks and Spear. He catches the life stealer, but can they bring him down in time? He gets the rage. He's doomed up. Pale Horse falling pretty low. The infest into the enemy here, or uh, into uh, the... It doesn't matter. He's alive. He's able to walk away, but rage is not available. They just tank through it all. Spectre doesn't even care that he's doomed. Arkosh Gaming is just running over Beast Coast now. You don't want to... Spectre's the last hero you want to doom there. He's just going to soak it up and continue walking at you. I mean, you have a people's gift as well. It's going to give him an extra 260 HP. To continue to chase you down. You got to be able to hit the Void Spear with this one. You're letting them get all these heals off. I mean, if you doom the Spectre, he's going to heal up through anything. He still has the, the damage resistance from Dispersion. And Witch Doctor's there healing with Voodoo Restoration. I was there tethered to him, hitting him with the Mechanism. Did you see the what Gremlo typed? <laughs> nice ping, Hector XD. As uh, it was Hector's response because he, he like me. I mean, I'm sure he would have pressed, you know, rage had he seen uh, Mars blink in with a uh, an arena. But you know, ping. No, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think Team Secret locked him up uh, to steal Gremlo's gamer juice. I think they locked him up because Gremlo's got an attitude and deserved to be locked up. <laughs> Gremlo, just, Gremlo needs to be taught a lesson. <laughs> exactly. Everything Slack says is false. I don't trust that man. Not for a second. I mean, look what happened with the show match today. Yeah. My brain just like exploded in that fight. I was trying to figure out where the life stealer went. There's just so much chaos. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, the life stealer ended up popping into the Earth Spirit. I think he wanted to get into the Doom That's instead. That's what I thought too, and I was like, wait, Doom's dead. Where did he go? <laughs> I think Doom wouldn't have died if he managed yeah, to Yeah, that's what I thought too. I was like, Doom might have survived and it might have just been a misclick. I mean, there was like six heroes standing on each other. Um, but Beast Coast walk into the Roche Pit and it looks like Arkosh, I mean, they're pinging it now, but they, uh, they're they a little bit too late. It's already dead. Damage amp and dying is just going to do too much work there. I forget how good Flesh Golem is sometimes. That 30% damage amp aura. Very good. And they have Wolf pa uh, the Pack Leader order. On Doom, yeah. Good teach Keen is a couple of things, that's for sure. Yep, yep. Well, Pale Horse has now recovered on the Spectre. Like you said, he would. He is now third on net worth, basically tied with the Life Stealer. And he's got Manta, he's got the Basher, he's got the Blade Mail. Could will be interesting to see if he decides to go for like a, an Abyssal Blade or for something else entirely. We'll see. Oops, being a Pale Horse. You might be in some trouble here. Uh, he's got Aya with him, so he'll be able to relocate out if he gets into too much trouble. Let's go Pale Phil rolling away bottom. Gremlo looking for the spear. Doesn't quite see him. Looks like Schofield should... Oh, they're just going to relocate right on top of him. Why not put the arena off the mark? Schofield is safe. He's going to go for the TP. Can they find him? Absolutely not. Some big spells wasted. Well played by Schofield. Man's too quick, you can't catch him, even with your boots first. So, man gets out of there. It's too hard to grab Earth Spear, really. Once he has a level 10 talent, he's able to roll, what, 2250 range on a four-second cooldown. It is ridiculous. Yep. Oh. Oh, Crows relocate back to the top lane. Killed him. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That's understandable. Nice find there. By Beast Coast, and they just make this top tower as well. Give me easier access to Arkosh's jungle, and... Grab their shrine too. 
So they're just going to start threatening the high ground here, right? I mean, they have the Aegis. No reason not to. You even have the Dragon Scale, which they do lack building hitting potential, but Dragon Scale helps quite a bit. Plus, they have this 70 HP catapult here. Bottom lane, they find the Earth Spirit. He's going to go down very easily. It's time to defend, though. They're tipping in very aggressively. Pale Horse does have his ultimate available. He could go ahead and uh, and use the Haunt, but Doom, he just comes out. Kedex right away onto the Voice Bear. He's just dead. No buyback available, way out of position. The MKB and the Deso from Lina just absolutely surprising them. And your melee barracks is gone. Chris Luck doing huge damage in this fight. There's the arena pinning that life story into the wall. The ward, it's going to do some work. They get the Aegis of the life story, but he has a second life available. Question is, will he go for the Rage TP? Probably not, since he do have the Basher. His team still here backing him up. DD going to expire relatively soon, but damage has been done. Beast Coast. Claim the first set of, uh, or the first barracks, rather. Yeah, uh, that's all that needed to happen in these team fights, though, is just getting that Doom off onto the Void Spirit. He's going to be, like, running around the back line doing the majority of this work. If he goes down, the team fight becomes much easier. And I think he was thrown off a little bit by the Glimmer Cape coming out onto the Doom. He didn't see the Doom cast animation come off. Uh, I think he was just in the middle of hitting that Dissimulate, and he went down. His Yule's Hefty just a fraction of a second from going off. Yeah, I really like the MKB pickups here from both Lina and um, Hector had one queued up, but it looks like he's going to go back for a Silver Edge, which, I mean, is a fantastic item in this game, right? There's no reason not to pick one up. Great against Mars and Spectre. Yep. Uh, Silver Edge here is just uh, too good not to get. And uh, we talked about this at the start of the drafting, but it was going to be some sort of Silver Edge carrier that was uh, going to be picked up as the pause one on Beast Coast here, given the fact they picked up too early in the draft. Oh. What yes, an item. Get the Mindbreaker. I am I told the admin to keep an eye on these guys, all right? There's some underhanded stuff going on here. Oh, Prepare my to... God. Just right. unbelievable. Wait, referee? Someone? All right. I haven't seen them use the ancient words yet, but maybe they're whispering them right now. I, I, I don't know. All right, I mean, if, if there's two jungle items you would want to get, it's those. And uh, Earth Spirit, he might have been baiting. Is on the backside. Goat takes a lot of damage. Gets melted by the Laguna Blade. And Schofield going to chase after him, but a nice Astral Step away. Cadence Bulbas. <gasps> very, very close as he will escape. Uh, a nice bait point. there from Beast Coast. This is where they want to be anyways. They clear out their own jungle again, and they'll move for one of the last two tier two towers that are still up. Grab the secure the map, and uh, I guess just hold things until they can get the next Roche. Yeah, I mean, other than that first, or that one good team fight in mid, Arkosh Gaming hasn't really found anything, right? Like, they have really struggled to come online um, besides that one fight. They are going to go ahead and just do the Abyssal Blade Spectre. And, I mean, she's almost got it. 400-ish gold away. It's a big pickup. Gremlo itemizing for a Lotus Orb, it seems. <laughs> nice luck gets found. Spear barely off the mark. And set that Yule's up into the LSA. Haunt comes out. All right. That is a big cooldown force there. So now Beast Coast feel very comfortable in fighting, and they immediately smoke. I love this decision. Yep, just playing it fast. Um, surprise, Gofield isn't using a Spirit Vessel Charge himself. He's sitting pretty low, but he commits on the Cadence immediately with the Yule Scepter. Oh, the silence. He has to Yule himself. Can he get away? He's going to get stunned. There's no way out. Void Spirit falls. What a beautiful setup from Schofield in the mid lane. This guy, dude, he is so good. Yeah, they don't have buyback available, but the Bounty Room pickup is actually going to allow him to have that if they decide to push these towers now. Nice grab there. Very nice. Across. Okay, one. He's out for blood right now. Silver Edge active. He's hunting for Pale Horse in the jungle. You do have to be careful. You are level 20 now on the Spectre, so you have that 400 health talent. The Abyssal Blade is finished, plus the Mind Breaker, and silence on this hero is Dyer's very good. Is under attack. All right, Lena chipping away mid tower. I mean, Jesus, this is your tower hitter, man. She just crushes this. She even has the Enchanted Quiver, which is a very nice uh, additional nuke offered to her kit. They do have B uh, fortification up in a couple seconds here, so they'll be able to take care of this catapult. But she hasn't even activated the double damage rune yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. It's it's rinse and repeat, man. They got DD for top barracks. Now they have DD again for the mid. Crow. Uh, wait a minute. 
I don't know what that was. He just got left there all by himself. He's going to buy back, and now there's the Abyssal Blade usage onto Lena, but your barracks is dead. Pale Horse needs to be so careful. The damage from this Lena is ridiculous. In goes the Void Spirit, but look at Chris Luck just standing his ground. The Doom catches Void Spirit on the backside, and now Chris Luck running for his life, trying to get away from the Spectre, but the Yules to buy him the time. A Blade Mail is going to be the end up finding him. Now it's just Pale Horse versus the World Double Buyback. He's trying to stay alive through it all, but the Infernal Blade damage is just too much, and Doom will find the kill. And now Arkosh Gaming on the back foot as they try to take down this Tombstone. It's causing so much uh, trouble for them. Schofield, older on in, does find uh, Goat, but may have uh, gone a little bit too far here. Never mind the Soul Rift keeping him nice and healthy. There's going to be the Death War drop. They will be able to finally bring down that Earth Spirit, but you've lost the lane of Barracks. The damage has been done, and it costs you a hell of a lot of gold. Yeah, they managed to get Chris Lucky. He just did so much damage with the, the DD rune there. My god, he ripped apart that Wisp wrist twice, and you know, without that sustain, Spectre isn't able to hit the start of the team fight. He hesitated so hard. He had the Abyssal Blade, jumped onto Lena with the Manta style in the Abyssal, and had to get back immediately after that because Wisp wasn't alive. Yeah. And if you lose that kind of initiation, you know, the team fight is just over. It only really works out for them when they're able to, to keep their backline alive and keep this whip safe. But Lena taking advantage of her super long range there. Yeah, now a huge gold lead going the way of Beast Coast. It hasn't updated quite yet, but 20,000 gold. They blow up in a second lane of barracks. Obviously, they took the melee barracks top a little while ago. And they are just further establishing their, their lane or their map control as... Harkosh is really starting to fall behind, and you can see a lot of the gold between the supports, right? Like the both supports on Beast Coast sitting at just over eight thousand net worth, while as you know, Io and Witch Doctor have borderline nothing. Io is uh, you got the mechanism, then not much after that one. I mean, Glimmer Cape now completed, but hey, you need more of that to be able to defend this last tower here. Lena's just gonna do the, do the exact same thing she did in this last team fight. And like you were saying about the Lincoln Sphere as well, your Abyssal Blade isn't going to be able to do anything. You run out of solutions. I mean, Chris Lock is just playing so tanky. As long as I get the right targets at the start of these team fights, take out this Wisp, take out the Witch Doctor, and hold that Doom for the Void Spirit to limit how much he can run around. And Doom's about uh, to have really an Axe as well, which applies break and increases damage. So this, yeah, is, this is one of the best the games for that for sure. Stun them for almost two seconds, applies break, and lasts uh, an extra two seconds. He has Frenzy. Dude, he has the, uh, he took the Devour Target Ancients. So yeah, he, he has the, the War Drum's Aura, uh, which gives you the accuracy plus the bonus attack speed, and then the Frenzy active for the Lena. Look at her go right now, dude. Uh, they can't do anything about Ooh, this. Oh, the Arena, they catch him, but... Chris Luck just pops the BKB and the Infest was there. They blew their whole team fight and now there's nothing left. Chris Luck just takes down the tower. He's got to be careful. Abyssal Blade is out. He has no BKB left. The saves are not there, but the, uh, and they just turn it around. There's so much damage coming out from this Lifestealer and this Lina. He's just going to start banging on this Spectre. Stunned up over and over again. The Infernal Blade is there. No saves inside his Crow. Tries his best to keep him alive, but the GG is called and Beast Coast take the game uh, one in this best of two series against Arkosh. Well, Arkosh not feeling so tough against uh, Beast Coast now, are ya? No wonder they got cold feet and took so long to join this lobby. Even messing with the game a little bit, getting those superior neutral items, they just couldn't stand up against these SA Giants. Yeah, I mean, they are such a good team. I love watching Beast Coast play, man. They are fantastic. Yeah, it's a solid performance. First game of the tournament out of them. Chris yep. Locke uh, doing absolutely insane job here on this Lena. A couple of fights he was off the mark with his light trigger race, but other than that, great item uh, purchases, going for that BKB first, being able to punish the heroes uh, or the players on Arkosh for being able to jump him on the back line. And uh, went 18 and 4 and 7. Yeah, Made he crushed it, man. Seven. His early rotations were so good, too. His early rotations were so good. He got that double kill top lane, and then when they, they catch that rotation again from the Void Spirit, TP's up there, ends up getting three more in a tower. Like, those those early plays from Chris Luck were huge. Fantastic start to the game, or to the series here um, from Beast Coast. I don't know. What else, what, is, what else is there to say, man? Like, they just crushed it that game. I'm uh, not surprised that against uh, real human players, Arkosh Gaming got absolutely destroyed, and uh, Slacks is getting put in his place right now. Yeah.
Well, that being said, we'll be having uh, game two here in this uh, series coming up after just a short break. Everyone stay tuned. We'll see you in just a moment.